Thank you again for joining another edition of AARP Foundation Experience Corps in your community. My name is O.S. Owen, and I'm your host. And today, we have Vicki Ortiz. She's the Communications Director for the AARP State of Illinois. Thank you so much for joining us, Vicki. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Alex. Okay, well, it's been a long time. We've been trying to get you here. <laughs> so that means you've been very, very, very busy. So thank you so much. I appreciate you asking. We are a busy office. So what is AARP? Um, I'm glad you asked. AARP, there are several different um, branches of AARP, which is, uh, this is nice to have the opportunity to be able to break that down for people. Yes. But my specific part of AARP is the state office of AARP Illinois. Um, now, stop right there. So you said state office. So every state has a state office. Every state has a state office. So AARP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization with a nationwide presence and 38 million members nationwide. Um, and we are dedicated to empowering and improving the lives for older adults, so those 50 and older. Okay, so AARP is for folks over 50 who want more out of life, okay? So now, you broke it down to the state, so you gave us the general. So tell us what you do or what the state office does. So while AARP nationally is working on major um, movements and the, my, my portion of AARP, they lobby in Washington, D.C. for laws that will improve lives for older adults. Um, then they also, um, they offer um, outreach and resources. We're coming up with studies and research and things that show how a, um, older adults can live mm -hmm. and age gracefully. But then at, we realized that doing this work and m connecting with the members across the country, the only way to do that is to have a local presence. And so in Illinois, we have what's called AARP Illinois State Office, and we have 16 staff members based both here and in Springfield, in Chicago and in Springfield. And we are in the neighborhoods, and we are in the Springfield State Capitol. Um, working lobbying, working on um, advocacy, standing up for what um, different policies that we mm -hmm. think impact older adults, and then we're also doing outreach. So we do things like caregiving conferences because uh, to help support older adults as they're taking care of their loved ones. Mm -hmm. We do um, um, movies for grown-ups. Mm, yes. It's an activity where it gets you out and about. It allows people to um, connect with those, and we, we, we sponsor these movies for free at the movie theaters. We opened a fit lot, um, a, a fitness park in Springfield, um, where it's an exercise lot outside mm. at, near a stone's throw from the Lincoln's tomb. And so it allows older adults to come work out and get some exercise and um, just be healthy about the way they're living. So these are all just um, small examples of things that we do. We're, we have our hands in a lot of different areas, but the, the main point is we're trying to, mm -hmm. to um, really um, improve lives for older adults. Well, now, you do the, the advocacy, and just recently you guys have had a phenomenal success in the passing of the drug bill, lowering the cost. Can you tell our viewing audience just what that is and how that's come about? Yes. So one of the things that AARP nationally is very focused on right now is the cost of prescription drugs and how high that has become for average everyday citizens. But not, it's astronomical. I mean, people have to make a choice whether to buy their prescriptions or pay their utility bills or even buy food. That's exactly it, OS. And we're very concerned about it because our members tell us that it's it's to the point where they are actually foregoing really necessary medication in order because they just can't afford it. So. Um, 
in Congress, um, at the national level, we're working on laws to change this, but we're also doing that here in Illinois. So the win that you mentioned, we just recently um, were a very big proponent and lobbied very hard. Our volunteers were going and knocking on the doors in this capital, and we had um, members across the state sending in their stories about how high the cost of prescription drugs has been for them. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think you know about is we had petitions that yes. we were collecting. Yes. You helped sign up, helped get them signed too. Absolutely, and to hear their stories, you know, uh -huh. I was motivated and compelled to to help. And and I tell people, in fact, they said, "Well, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Well, can you imagine the power of 80, 90, 100,000 petitions all wrapped up coming from an organization like AARP? You gotta listen to that. You just don't turn the other ear." And they did. Oh, as the good news is. Um, one step at a time. Um, in the last two weeks in the state of Illinois, they uh, passed a bill, both houses um, passed a bill that's going to cap the amount that um, residents can pay for insulin. Now that's Excellent. just one drug, but we yeah. see well, that's just one drug. But we see that as a great stepping stone for getting more uh, policies that put caps on what people have to pay out of pocket every month. And also to recognize the power of the group, the organization. When people come together under a, a single directive, anything can happen. And you know the the slogan, "Real possibilities." Mm -hmm. What was impossible last week has become possible now. I mean, people thought that this was going to be impossible. Mm -hmm. And through real possibilities, it has happened. That's a very good point, OS. And I think that what we try to remind our members of is they have a voice, and it's actually a voice that matters. Um, we had a very big hand here in Chicago um, in the Chicago mayor's race. Um, last fall, we um, went out and we did a campaign. Mm -hmm. and. Actually, um, the theme of our campaign was Hear Our Voice. Hear Our Voice. And what we did is we asked the members, uh, um, our members in Chicago, to come out because it was the first time, as you know, in the, the Chicago's mayor's race. Remember, at one point, they, there were 16 people. That's right. And you had um, all of the candidates in your office across the hall. That's right. We invited each of them, and we told them this is the first opportunity for new leadership, somebody, a, a new candidate who was coming in. And we, for too long, um, older adults in Chicago, the voices of them had been ignored. And yet, research has shown that when who comes out to vote? It's older adults. Yes. We decide the election. Um, so we had each and every one of those candidates come into the AARP Illinois offices, and we told them um, what our members were concerned about. We said that affordability has become too high in Chicago. They're worried about staying and being able to age gracefully in their homes. Yes. They're worried about safety, um, public safety, and violence in Chicago. You know that. Yes. That's an ongoing issue. They're worried about um, utility rates being too high and taxes. I mean, these are all things that the candidates had to know and had to understand that these are the constituents that they would be serving. Now, how many members do we have here in Illinois? In Illinois, there are 1.7 million members across the state. So you have a voice, and AERP is here to help that voice be heard. I mean, 1.8 million, how powerful is that? And to have all those petitions signed and mm -hmm. to be delivered is powerful. It's powerful in numbers. Yeah. And AERP, you guys, you're lobbyists. You do outreach. You do so much. And today I wanted to talk about some of the things that we do collectively and the things that we, we do differently. Because you are with AERP. State Office, Illinois, and I am with AARP Foundation, in particular, the Experience Corps program. So we have experiences, we have programs, and you deal with hot spots or issues at the hand. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Anything you want to add to that? Um, no, just that I think that, you know, we are very much a volunteer-based organization. And so, so much of what we do, I told you there are only 16 staffers doing this incredible work and in getting laws passed and reaching out to the community. Um, last That's in the whole state of Illinois. In the whole state of Illinois. And that I haven't even mentioned some of the fun things we're doing. Um, just a couple months ago, we 
um, unveiled a brand new mural in Little Village. That's right. That's right. Tell us about that. Yes. So we um, we are trying very hard to let people in Chicago and across the state know that we are here for them. We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. The only thing we are out there for is to is to help. And so uh, one um, community that we know um, has not used the resources to the fullest capacity is the Hispanic Latino community. Yes. Sometimes that's because of a language barrier. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's just, um, you know, we're not connecting a with cultural, them. A cultural trust factor. You know, we have to go to the community and see. And just so that, you know, you know, and for our, our viewing audience, the, the state office supports one of the schools that we have our volunteers in in Pilsen. I mean, the Experience Core program is where we reach out to those that are 50 and over to be tutors and mentors for kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and third graders in the Chicago public schools. And the state office supports a couple of, of our schools. So we work collectively in the communities, and we have to go into those communities. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then how can we build trust? How can we build a, a presence there? And it's, it's quite challenging. Now, if someone wanted to volunteer with the state office, mm -hmm. they would call 312-458-3626. 312-458-3626. And that's for anyone who would be interested in volunteering with the state office and doing advocacy and doing outreach and whatever else that comes up, special events. And for those out there who are interested in volunteering with, oh, not that slide, uh, volunteering with the AERP Foundation Experience Corps, you would call 312 660 312-660-8655. 312-660-8655. And our offices are across the hall. We're on the same floor, and we work together on a regular kind of basis here. Now, let me see now. With the foundation, we have programs, and we have four areas to focus. Senior hunger, senior poverty, senior isolation, and senior housing. And these are all of the areas that the state office touches in one way or the other. You know, movies for grown up goes to one we call senior isolation. Mm -hmm. The food drive, oh, that's a phenomenal thing where we collectively put these meals together, call it the meal pack. Mm -hmm. And we do it all over the United States. We have key cities and the foundation and the state office or ARP state, they come together. And I think we did it in here in Chicago, summer before last, and we had over 4,000 volunteers. Oh, wow. And it's and we, true. We packed a million point five meals. That's amazing. And that's the power of your voice in the community, the power of your desire to support and, and volunteer. We bring all it together under the umbrella of the AARP, and that's just phenomenal. Real possibilities. What was impossible last week is, is possible today. It's true, OS. I think that um, while there are distinctions between our two branches of AARP, I think there's a lot of um, work that we do in tandem. Yes. As you mentioned, the mural that I talked about in that community is the community where you have um, Experience Corps has a school. Yes. So while we're out on the street painting a mural and involving the work of a local artist and talking to people about the different caregiving resources, you're inside the school with your tutors teaching um, kids and improving their literacy skills. Well, research says that mm -hmm. the third grade reading scores are the best indication of how well a student is going to do, whether they're going to graduate from elementary school, mm -hmm. or whether they go to high school, or whether they have a relationship with the judicial criminal system. Wow. And reading, well, these little children grow up to be adults and more than likely to be seniors. So it starts there. Oh. It starts there, and our volunteers who have retired, who've had wonderful careers, who've raised families, bring those life skills into the classroom as they bring those life skills into the state office. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of um, the things I love about your program is that it kind of capitalizes on the best of both generations, right? It's the, the 
the older adults and the experience and the wisdom they have to share, and then also the innocence and the hope that the young people still have. And when you merge those together, it's kind of the perfect um, combination, and it's it, it, the, the work that you are all able to do. And I've seen the statistics. I mean, you guys are really making change in Chicago. Well, well in fact, in Chicago, it's become a movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, our older adults, the need to be needed, to get up, to go out. It's two hours a day, two days a week, either a Monday and a Wednesday or a Tuesday and a Thursday and a lot of our volunteers volunteer in the state office because they have the capacity they want to give we have the uh, the tax aid where we do free taxes in the community that's an AARP program uh, that goes across both corridors to the state office as well as the the foundation the foundation we have the uh, the CSEP program if you're 55 and older and you're looking for employment we have the at 50 work for yourself in conjunction with Northern Eastern Illinois University where they're offering this program so we've got a lot going on to encourage to motivate to inspire old Americans and I just think that more people should know about what we do we as opposed to what they think we do we we, we don't sell insurance sorry guys we, we don't sell insurance no. and we, we don't sell membership AERP is a membership organization or I should say a social change organization with a membership and with 38 million around the United States mm -hmm. and 1.8 million here in Chicago let your voice be heard now what are some of the hot issues that are coming up that you guys are doing here in Chicago that you could share with our viewing audience well no pun intended one of the things that we're very upset about right now uh, is um, all the controversy swirling around ComEd the electric company? Yes. I don't know if you've been following in the news, but there are all kinds of questions being raised. There's an FBI investigation underway um, about some of the lobbying practices um, mm -hmm. that ComEd uses and the people that they um, have been paying. And we are questioning whether or not that is having a ra um, an impact on what people like you and me have to pay in our electric bills. Another issue, um, and now, I mean, it's not just us. Mayor Lightfoot last week announced that she is not going to renew the contract of ComEd with the city until some questions are answered. So she's calling them to the mat and saying, what's going on here, guys? So AARP is really staying on top of that issue um, and making and, and f um, asking our members and the people out there to really just force our elected officials to to insist on transparency and to do what you say you're going to do all of these promises are made mm -hmm. and people depend on our votes mm -hmm. shouldn't we get what we bargained for or shouldn't we get what was promised to us and shouldn't they be honest about what we're paying for absolutely and um, so that's one utility company, but we're not just stopping with them. We're also on the case of people's gas. So most Chicago residents have no other choice. That's that's the gas pro natural gas provider. And that between North North Shore is that the, that's the other one? Um, Nicor. 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 Right. But the bulk of people in the city of Chicago are that's using right. people's gas. And. Um, the unfortunate thing is they d people don't realize that before even using a single therm of gas, there are infrastructure costs that are being passed on to the consumers to the tune of $48. That is on your bill before you even use any gas. And that is because People's Gas has been using, um, has a very costly infrastructure program that they have been modernizing. And we think that they are, they're doing it way too fast and at the cost, at the expense of taxpayers. So we are going to the city council in Chicago. This is the work that AARP is doing. And we are asking them to, to force people's gas to talk to us, tell us about why, and tell um, tell its um, consumers why they have to spend the money all at once and why we have to pay for it now. And it's buried in that bill. It's on the bill, mm -hmm. but if you don't know what you're looking oh, at, no. you've got no idea what that is. And then when you call and ask about it, you get the runaround. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunate for me that I'm know you guys and I go across the hall and I can kind of get some explanation which I can take back to my community mm -hmm. however I agree that transparency is important here and people 
are financially tight. So between the high cost of drugs, the high cost of utilities, the high cost of food, and if you're on a fixed income, you're just squeezed out of there. Mm -hmm. And Chicago's already a very expensive city to live in. Mm -hmm. So with oh, these other things impending, yes. There are some heartbreaking stories that we have heard. Um, when we were working on this issue last year, we had a fellow come to us and say he and his wife bought a home in the city of Chicago thinking they would be able to live there and retire and die in these home, this home. And he was done paying his mortgage. He had paid it off years ago, but he keeps, um, but in order to keep the, the gas on, especially in an upper flat that he doesn't even use, um, he, he was getting priced out. He was going to have to leave his beloved home because the, his gas bills he are just too high. Couldn't afford the gas. But his question was, why are they so high? I'm not even in that top floor. There's nothing being used, and yet I'm getting these bills every day. So these are the things that we're trying to come, take out of the dark. We're trying to get more information out there. And remember, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan. So I think a lot of people, um, they tend to say AARP, oh, you know, they, they, they lean to the left, they t lean to the right. We actually do neither, and we can't. Um, we in Our status and the fact that we're a nonprofit, we can only stay that way by being nonpartisan. We are... The the only partisan we show is on behalf of our members mm -hmm. and we are that's who we care about and we will represent whichever side suits them best mm -hmm. now you got into something that's called livable communities mm -hmm. right can you share with our view viewing audience what that is and how it impacts them Sure. Um, so he, right here for 2020 in Chicago, the two different ways, um, we, um, AARP recognizes that um, older adults want to be able to age in place That's and right. comfortably. We do. They don't want to <laughs> have to leave and, you know, they've spent their whole lives working for these homes, building these homes. This is where they, their grandkids come to visit. But in order to do so, your communities have to be livable. You have to have... Um, transportation systems in place that make it possible for you to get from place to place. That's right. You need to have public safety. You can't be worried about walking to the grocery store. That's something that we brought up with all the mayoral candidates. Older adults are feel scared sometimes leaving their homes. And older adults also do more walking and more and ride public transportation more than anyone else. That's exactly right. The um, older adults pr um, proportionally make up more of the pedestrians on the street than any other age group. So when we talk about livable communities, we're talking about improving um, pedestrian safety. We're working very closely with an organization in Chicago called Vision Zero. Vision Zero. I like that. Vision Zero. And the, 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 the thought behind that name is it's, it is geared toward eliminating the number of people dying in traffic crashes to zero. We want none. Oh. Because the idea is you can you can educate and you can develop policies and systems that make people safer. So when you ask me about livable communities, what are we doing? We are trying to work with Vision Zero. Last year, we funded something called a People Spot, and that is a traffic. Um, it is um, in the Chatham neighborhood. Okay. In okay. Chicago. Yeah. We went local and we, at a very busy intersection there, we designated an area. It kind of looks like a gathering spot. And there are chairs and there are um, tables and it's where a parking space would be um, or a bike lane. And the idea is to give people a place to congregate that's safe. Um, so these are the kinds of things that we're investing in in order to um, improve livable communities. Another thing that we're working on um, in Chicago, do you know in, um, in the city of Chicago it is illegal to have something called a granny flat? Do you know what that is? No, I don't. A granny flat. No, I don't. Okay, so say your mother is living, um, you know, she's aging. She does. She's not ready to go to a nursing home, or she doesn't. But it's she not can't like the mother-in-law house, right? Not the it is. It is. Okay, so then so, yes, I do know. We call it the mother-in-law house. Mother-in-law house. That's illegal by Chicago City Ordinance. You are not allowed to have an accessory dwelling unit, another place on your property where someone can live. 
So that's the way the city code is. But what we as an organization that's in, um, interested in livable communities are paying attention to is that needs to be an option for people as they age in place because they're not going to go, they don't want to go to these group homes and they can't stay in their homes. So AARP is working on livable communities so that we can change the law and make it possible, get a city ordinance that allows um, accessory dwelling units or the mother-in-law suite, is that mm. what you called? So that people have, play they have options. So that's something that we're working on a so lot. So on the books, I, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't even acknowledge the fact that it was illegal in the city because all of us, uh, my generation and my friends, you know, whose parents are still alive and they're living with them, they end up in the mother-in-law house, right. which is you know, adjacent on the same property. It's just what you described. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea. And I'm sure they still don't have any idea. Mm -hmm. But I, I like the livable communities, uh, the things that, you know, you guys are doing out there mm -hmm. to uh, uh, encourage uh, safety, fun living. I mean, as we age, we have to age strategically. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, if you just uh, tuned in, I'm here with Vicki Ortiz, who is the Communications Director for the AERP State of Illinois. And if anyone out there is interested in volunteering with the AERP State of Illinois office, please call 312-458-3626. 312-458-3626. Once again, my name is O.S. Owen. I am with the AARP Foundation Experience Corps program. Let me give a warm thanks out to our producer, Black Butterfly. And until next time, we'll see you in the community with the AARP Foundation Experience Corps. Enjoy.